Mark gets my goat. We would be honored if you would join us. Yeah, there were a couple of things I wanted to talk about, but I, I think we probably talked for a long time. It's okay. Go for it. Well, I mean, this can be cut out because it's not all that important. But do you remember around 2001, 2002, where Lucas suddenly started to say that the Star Wars movies were the story of Darth Vader? And he was like, and you get to see him as a little boy and you get to see him become a man and then you get to see him fall from grace and then you get to see him as this bad guy and then you get to see him redeemed. And it's really it's the, the, the rise and fall of Darth Vader is what you should call a Star Wars. And now, I, I, that always bothered the crap out of me because <laughs> he was just a thug in right. Star Wars. He was not the main villain and all that. I mean, it was just luck that he got to live at the end of that movie and be put in the hands of somebody who's like, oh my gosh, you know what we could do with this guy? I don't know. I mean, there may be people out there that subscribe to that Lucas ideal and say, then you got to bring Darth Vader back if it's going to be a new Star Wars movie. Mm. I, I hope not. I mean, these people should be disappointed that Darth Vader doesn't come back. I, I'll be disappointed if he does, but the needs of me outweigh them. That's right. But anyhow, I think we'll probably be talking about this for as long as we have a podcast. Because there'll for be as new... as long as we live. There, there'll be new... Well, yeah, I will be, <laughs> certainly. Because I, I, we tell, I was telling Abby Hilton the other day about how important Star Wars was to me as a child. When it came out, what it said to me... The friends that I made because they also loved Star Wars and all that, that formed who I am. And not the only thing, you know, there were Marvel comics and there was, you know, other things like that, but that's a really important part of who I am. And so I would imagine that that will continue until I am no longer, but we'll find out more and more. And probably there will be things that we legitimately hate. That will be that gets my goat episodes in a right. technical sense. Yeah, I expect sense. that to happen. I mean, there's things like I've read some of those Star Wars novelizations or novel. I don't know what you call them. The expanded universe stuff. Right. And they would come up with ideas for things. I remember there was like the Thrawn trilogy because he was the bad guy in it where they go to this planet where there's like these worms or caterpillars or something like that, which repel the force. I don't know. There was something about that idea that I absolutely hated. It was like midi-chlorian kind of uh, type of a thing to me. It was just, you know, the force is within all of us. It's not something you can repel. Yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't think that way because Jedis use the force. So why could you not make the force go away? I don't know. But it just bugged the crap out of me. I hated it. Bad idea, I thought. And I'm sure there'll be things like that that they come up with in these new films. Maybe they'll use those those little beasties in the movie maybe thrawn maybe it will be the thrawn trilogy that they decide to make episode six seven and or seven eight and nine i don't know i think there was another one where like the emperor gets resurrected and that was something that always bothered me yeah that kind of crap bugged me too whether there was a clone of the emperor or whether he was like reborn in a young form or his soul went into luke or whatever it might be it undid the happy ending of return of the jedi right yeah, any of that kind of stuff. There's this and that that's going to bug me. And I'm sure they'll come up with ideas that are the same way in these new films. Like I said, you know, it'll be like, oh, yeah, episode 12 was cool. But episode 10, oh, that's where they used those stupid force repelling caterpillars. Oh, that was dumb. You know, the part where R5-D4 hides in the refrigerator to escape the Death Star explosion. <laughs> that just, oh, that was a deal breaker for me. Yeah, I, I totally know what you're talking about. One, one last thing, though. We're recording this in November of 2012. And so if you're listening to this in a year in the future, two or five years or whatever, you already know all these things. But I, I was wondering if you had to pick somebody to direct it, who would you choose? Because I got somebody that came to mind and it's like, okay, that's my guy. And I'm going to be disappointed when he's not named director. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people, of course, they uh, right away jumped to Chris Nolan because of what he did with Batman and made it so popular and so well-loved and made good films. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, you could go for a Ridley Scott who has done sci-fi films. Although I, I don't know how, I mean, Star Wars is sci-fi, but it's not just sci-fi. You know, it's not 
your standard sci-fi. It's not alien. It's much beyond that. It's basically a fantasy movie set in space instead. So it's different than that. So I don't know if Ridley Scott is the right kind of a person for that. I mean, you, you can't go at Star Wars like it's a sci-fi film. You have to have a, a more open mind for it than that. So I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not really good at picking a, go ahead and lay it on me. Okay. Well, I was just wanting to jump in because of what you were saying. <laughs> and yeah, I don't care if people disagree with me. It's fine because he's not going to get cast or given the job. And I don't know who you would hire. Would you hire somebody who has a distinct vision like a Guillermo del Toro or somebody like that? Who's going to bring himself to it? Who's going, going to going put to talking somebody. vaginas and stuff into it? Right. Or are you going to hire somebody who's going to toe the line and do what the studio tells him and make a movie cheaply and efficiently like a Brett Ratner? I'm not saying Brett Ratner needs to get the job. I'm just, there are directors like that that are workmen. Uh-huh. They're tradesmen. But my guy is Andrew Stanton. Oh, okay. And the reason... Although I friggin' love Finding Nemo and I friggin' love Wally, but my reason is John Carter of Mars. That was a space fantasy movie. That right. was not a science fiction movie or a Western or whatever it was. That was what Star Wars is with all these various aliens and they're working together in a big, larger than life force and bad guys and another planets and technology that's not explained it's just magic it's mm-hmm. just whatever it happens i mean that sending him from earth to to barsoom barsoom thank you the way that he did or whatever there's no explanation for that it just happens in that and i know that he's probably not going to get the job because yeah. princess of mars didn't do well or, and it was a disney film too so they were probably still sore at him for blowing it because they i think they expected to Turn oh, sure. that into a franchise. I'm sure they did, but it was not his fault, man. I appreciated the heck out of that movie more the second time that I saw it, where I was just like, wow, this was a monumental achievement, and this guy was screwed. And so, uh, I mean, that's that's the guy I would pick, because he's three for three. Unless he's done a fourth movie, and I can't remember what it was. Let's check it out real quick. We've got Michael Arndt on here right now. Finding Nemo 2 okay so i was right he's only done the three films um although he was co-director of a bug's life but we don't really know what that means and it looks like he's directing the sequel to finding nemo which uh i guess that's the one thing i can complain about disney buying pixar and making sequels to everything that they had instead of making new good films there was a flick called Brave that came out this year. And as far as I know, it wasn't a sequel to him. Yeah, I know. It's the last thing, it seems, except for apparently that Michael Arndt is set to write the future Pixar project that takes place inside your mind. Well, what about the one <laughs> where the dinosaurs didn't go extinct and they live alongside us and as pets and stuff like that? Well, That's okay, not I guess a they're sprinkling a few in there. I guess the sequels are just jammed in there as well. The fact that they're making a Finding Nemo 2 is... It just doesn't seem like it. it's like cars too, monsters too. Didn't need them. People complain all the time that Hollywood has run out of ideas and kind of cynicism and all that. But I like sequels. I do I too. Rather, I would rather see a sequel than a remake any day. Oh yeah, totally. And if something captured my imagination, of course I would like to see those characters again and see that world again and all that. And and yeah, okay, maybe. There are original ideas or whatever that are not getting financed because we have this built-in franchise. You know, Smurfs 2 has to come out next summer or whatever. (laughs) But I'm not going to see Smurfs 2. Or Smurfs 1. Yeah. Again, we're talking about Lucasfilm. Indiana Jones 4 wasn't all that great. They should have made an Indiana Jones 5 to show that they could fix it. And there's been no talk of that. Now, Paramount still owns the distribution right for Indiana Jones, but... The character it was owned by Lucasfilm. All right, so maybe so, we'll see it after all. You know, I I don't know. I, a lot Unfortunately, of people... Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones, so that might be the problem that you run into. Whereas with Star Wars, you can do whatever you want. It's a universe. It's not a character. Um, but yeah, you know, I totally agree with you. I also like sequels, but I don't like sequels to 
movies that are obviously over you know what i mean okay all right I it's agree. like matrix you know I've, we've talked about the matrix before and how you know you watch the end of it and you're like no dude, this is over nothing he's, is over nothing he's realized his potential and now he can just blink and this whole matrix will turn off basically and so you know there's nothing more to tell and then they oh no we've got to make a sequel to this and so they made a sequel and it was terrible and then it was followed by another sequel that was terrible and finding nemo is one of those he had to go find his son he found his son he brought him back everybody's happy how do you make a sequel to that monsters incorporated it's one of those they had to foil the plot that was going on at the factory they foiled it they turned their world upside down in a totally new way and you notice that monsters 2 is prequel not sequel because oh what God. do you do after that there's nothing to do after that so at least they didn't try to shoehorn something in well no the this the a sequel was originally that boo was now an adult and she was a prostitute who was <laughs> oh addicted gosh. to smack and sully and mike uh -huh. I, I don't know that the, the I, I i'm not thrilled with the idea of monsters university but i will go see it i will too because I Cars 2 notwithstanding, I feel that Pixar still has earned my loyalty. Mm -hmm. And I I liked those characters. I liked Mike and Sully and the world that they existed in. And if you can tell a Toy Story 2 or Toy Story 3 level story in that universe, then bring it on. Nobody complains about Toy Story 3 now. Yeah. But in the weeks and months leading up to its release, people were like, you just need yeah. run out of ideas. Nobody so made bad. sequels in the 1950s. I have you know? to admit, I was uh, one Nobody of those that was very uh, apprehensive about Toy Story 3 being a sequel that was... How many years after Toy Story 2 was? <laughs> a long time. And that uh, is also kind of one of those things. Like, have you seen a sequel of something that comes out like 20 years after the original that turns out awesome? There's so few of those. Oh, uh, pr pr Prometh? Oh. <laughs> I've heard that Rocky V is very good. It's not. Or no, not Rocky V. Rocky Balboa? The sixth one. The sixth one? I've heard that one is good. And I've heard that Rambo movie that came out, which was just called Rambo, again, <laughs> was also very good. But I didn't see either of those. Tron Legacy. There you go. See you I'm saw that. About. I did. Yeah, okay. I only watched the crappy sequels that come out 20 years later. Not I, the good one. Right now, I can't think of any sequels that came out 20 years later where you're just like, oh, that's awesome. But they have, I, I want to say they have to exist, but I can't quite get that phrase out. I, I believe they're possible. Well, Toy Story 3 is not I mean, 20 years later, but it's a great deal later and it was awesome. So there's your one example if you need one of a movie made way after the last one was over and when you thought you were done and you weren't going back again although there was no reason not to i still wonder why they jumped us forward and made it present day instead of just okay the next year another adventure happens why did we have to go all i mean you didn't have to kill toy story off like that but uh whatever the they still make the, the shorts. Yes, they do. Though, and those are great. And they never seem to, and this is my opinion, outlive their welcome because they're only eight minutes long. Right. But Did I, you enjoy the re party Saurus I, Rex? I haven't seen any of oh, them except the, the Hawaiian one. Uh, I saw the party Saurus Rex because it was Finding Nemo uh, intro one. It was fun. Very pretty, I'll have to say. We got off topic with this whole sequels and pixar thing and i guess i guess we were saying that pixar has been somewhat tainted by disney now that they've kind of forced them to do sequels to all their old films that were beloved but i still don't see it being a problem for star wars there's just no i mean that's all there is to it there's star wars and you do sequels of it and it just happens and happens and happens so i think that's good i don't think there's a possibility of it getting any worse it can not get better it could still be crap. They could put in new characters that are Dexter Jetsters and Jar Jar Binkses and those kind of terrible things that they did in the uh, prequels. Uh, on second thought, no, not really, no, no. But 
that's not worse. It's just the same. And maybe that's what it becomes. I guess we'll see. I get the feeling that Michael Arndt is not going to write us something like that. He doesn't seem like that kind of a dude. I really liked uh, Little Miss Sunshine. Did you like that film? Did you ever watch that film? I did. I watched it. I don't know that I liked it all that much. The funny thing is the thing I liked the best out of it is was the soundtrack was so good. I own it and listen to it as often as I can. Well, that's probably not true, but I listen to it often. <laughs> but uh, I don't get the likelihood of us getting a script like that. And I think with Disney being in charge of it and all the success that they've had in the last 15 years, Pirates of the Caribbean and Pixar films and so on and so forth, that uh, they'll be able to get some really good people to work on this. And it's probably like it was when Lucas finally went to do the uh, prequels in the first place. Where he just had to say Star Wars and there was like, oh, me, 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 please pick, pick me, put me in this, please. You know, there's all these people that grew up and now they can be the person that redeems Star Wars. You know, they can be that person that everybody loves because they made Star Wars good again (laughs) instead of poor like Samuel Jackson or Liam Neeson or Jake Lloyd or whoever who's going to be remembered always as the ones that killed it. I ever see you again? Yeah, the benefit of this Michael Arndt guy is that that's his job is to write the script, and that's his only job. He's not picking out costumes and saying this and this is good and <laughs> alien designs and this is good and all that. He's coming around and with his little stamp. Right. Stamping Looking his at the approval. budget, listening to John Williams and saying, oh, I don't like that, or I'll try this. Picking lightsaber colors and hairstyles and extras and actors and monsters and locales for shooting and all that. I mean, just the overwhelming amount of responsibilities that you take on yourself when you're doing what Lucas did for the prequels, where he's like, oh, I'm going to do everything. This guy's one job is to write the best script that he can, and he can focus on it all day long. And so I think in that, you got to have a better outcome, at least on paper. Somebody could make it and F it up. Mm -hmm. and all that stuff but uh, as long as the script the the bedrock on which you're building is solid i think you'll do better than what the prequels did (laughs) here's a quick question that we can uh, continue to drag it on with we mentioned this as we were uh, heading out and walking around the neighborhood for a bit do you think that they will remake episodes one two and three and have a new trajectory to them so that they'll come out someday and say you know what those were episodes one two and three first of all they sucked and second of all they weren't the real thing we're gonna make the real thing now this is the real fall of darth vader and redo episodes one do you think that'll ever happen i don't know i mean now that lucas is not controlling every aspect of it it's possible I, I like you said if there's money to be made it's possible but i i don't know i, I think it, it'll be a while right before we ever worry about it but at the, the same time why remake one two and three if you're not going to remake four five and six also that would wow. be the temptation is we're just going to start again with star wars we're rebooting the franchise <laughs> and you know some things will remain the same that your grandparents loved but some things we will change, you know. I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. Oh, I can even see the ad campaign. This is not your father's Star Wars. It's way worse. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, obviously, if they remake the prequels, it can't be way worse. But remaking the original trilogy, that is one thing that I do kind of worry about. We were mentioning that, yeah, there, there's some things out there that just seem to be inviolable Invaluable, inviolable. It's, I know that's a word, but I'm not sure how to say it. You cannot violate these things. And we talk about Gone with the Wind is a film that no one will remake. At least I don't think they will. Maybe The they Wizard will. of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is a film. Casablanca is a film. They're not going to remake. There's certain films that they're just on that level where you cannot touch them. You will get nothing but scorn and shame heaped upon your name if you dare. You could make a Casablanca 2 if you wanted to. They're making a Wizard of Oz 2 or prequel or whatever the heck it is. 
you could make things in the same universe and around it. They made Scarlet. Right, to but you just Scarlet. cannot mess with certain films. Don't ever I, do. There are some things. Shame heaped upon your name forever. Uh, and I, I know Universal has wanted to remake Jaws for years and years, and they're just afraid of alienating Steven Spielberg, of pissing him off because he still has a relationship with the studio and brings them, you know, does a movie with them every once in a while. Jaws seems to be one of those that they're never yeah. going to touch. I would say Jaws. But I would have said Psycho was one <laughs> of those perennial movie, you know, that's that's just of its time and perfect and all that. But They know. remade it, but it, nobody talks about it. It's forgotten. I remember at the time hearing them, oh, yeah, we recreated every shot. What every enormous waste. Every photon of yeah. light. We recreated on her face in this shot, same lighting. But yeah, an enormous waste of time that was just stupid. Why would you do that? We have it already and it's perfect. Yeah, we could do a whole episode about a shot for shot remake (laughs) of Psycho. I mean, that's something that you would do in film school for one scene of Psycho or You know, my friends and I, we put together $15,000 and we're going to remake Michael Jackson's thriller. You know, that kind of thing. (laughs) It's a thing that you do as a kid, as a showreel or just to say that you did it or whatever. But it's not some, I mean, a shot for shot remake of anything. I don't know that that's ever been done or ever should be done again. What's the point? But yeah, it just seems like Star Wars is one of those films. The Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi trilogy is one of those that just kind of sits in that inviolable realm along with Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. And um, There's many other films that would fall into that. Yeah, nobody would think to remake Citizen Kane. Right. Uh, I mentioned Sound of Music before. Uh huh. You could easily remake that because everybody knows the songs and that. And ooh, let's see how Julia Roberts does as Maria. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, that I can see a studio guy saying that. Yeah. But it's almost considered sacred. Right. It's, we don't want to touch that. The real movie exists and we want our children to watch it. We don't want them to see the version with John Leguizamo. <laughs> as Mr. Van Trapp. <laughs> There's some of those that are like that. So I, I think it's possible that we may never see a remake, but I I don't know. Considering the way Hollywood's going with the remake thing, I don't know that that's possible to believe that there'll never be a remake, especially after the rights have been bought and it's not in the hands of the original creator. And I mean, they're remaking everything from Teen Wolf to... If it was made in the 80s, it needs to be remade now. I think it's probably fair to say that the Teen Wolf MTV series is way more popular than the Michael J. Fox film ever was. I don't know. I don't watch it. But then again, I'm not 15 years old. But now we've gotten into the realm of that gets my goat, the remake. (laughs) And for every one remake that is successful, you get a Footloose remake. You get a Fame remake. You get one of these remakes like Conan the Barbarian or whatever, that lost money, that are unsuccessful, and yet they still keep doing it. And it's because of fear, fear of taking a risk or, you know. Fear of a black planet? Of a black hat, in fact. And it's because they think that if it's familiar, it has a better chance of being the one out of four that Mm -hmm. does make the money. And everybody looks at those few that are successful and says, this is what we're shooting for. Nobody looks at the other thing and says, Ugh. but we had just in the last couple of years, 20th Century Fox announced they were remaking Buffy the Vampire Slayer without Joss Whedon. And the reaction was so negative that that went nowhere, that that got unmade or unannounced or, you know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. And maybe that's how it is with Disney saying, oh, gosh, we'd love to remake Star Wars or, you know, whatever. We, we would love to remake Raiders of the Lost Ark with a young actor and all that stuff. But the fear of that backlash, uh, because there is such a thing as bad publicity. Right. You know, they say in Hollywood there's no such thing. But when you hear that Battleship lost over $100 million or something like that, come on, that's bad publicity. If you're the director of Battleship, you don't want to give a statement when that's what the headline is. 
So, so I think there are certain things that are sacrosanct right now. And maybe they kick around the idea and see what the reaction is. And if the reaction is negative enough, they, they'll back away. I, I don't know. What would you say to a starting Indiana, not remaking Raiders of the Lost Ark, but going back with a younger actor and having him be Indiana Jones see, in a prequel-ish kind of a thing? My cousin is always saying that they need to do that. But I, what's weird is I grew up in a world where that happened. That's the last thing Misa wants. River Phoenix played Indiana Jones. Oh, okay. Corey Carrier played Indiana Jones. Sean Michael Flannery played Indiana Jones. And there was a fourth guy, the guy with the eye patch, played Indiana Jones. Except for River Phoenix, nobody even thinks about those anymore. Uh, it didn't hurt the franchise any. It just... See, I lived in the alternate world in which Tom Selleck played Indiana Jones. And? And it, it killed the franchise. It never even made it past the first film. I mean, that was it. So maybe it was just the mustache. If he'd gotten rid of the mustache, it would have been okay. I bet he would have gotten rid of the mustache. <laughs> You've seen that screen test, right? No, I haven't. I just I heard it's about it nice. in Impossible Dreams, that story by Tim Pratt. I'm trying to think that it's like him and Barbara Hershey or somebody is Marion. Mm -hmm. And he's good. He's I mean, I have always liked Tom Selleck. Yeah, he was and Magnum P.I., man. Young, How can you not like him? A young guy. You know, he probably had seven or eight years less than Harrison Ford did, you know, so he might have been able to make more of them or whatever. But there's just something about what Ford brought to that part that is in inextricable to me with the character. So I don't want to see a George Lazenby Indiana Jones movie, but I don't want to see it, but it, I might grudgingly go to it like you did with Honor Majesty's Secret Service or Live and Let Die or Golden Eye or Living Daylights or whatever it is where you had a James Bond and now here's the new James Bond and you're like, eh, you know, that was pretty good. Or I, I like this guy too or whatever the deal is. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's out of the question that somebody else could be Indiana Jones as long as it's not Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be him because he's whatever. What was his character name? Grease or Gr Mutt Williams. Mutt, that's it. I don't know. That that was meant to be the punchline with which we ended this. Oh, okay. Episode. Well, then let's end But it. if you want to keep talking about no, it, No, no, no. Cool. I'm done. Thanks for listening, everybody. And have a pleasant tomorrow. Why not? Yeah. Be on your way. Get on your way. Dang it. I always screw that oh, one up. you bastard. <laughs> that Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons okay. 3.0 license. Remember, the Force will be with you, always. Apprehensive about Toy Story 3 being a sequel that was... How many years after Toy Story 2 was? 15, a long say. time, and that tends to be... No, no, this, it would have been 2007. The six, 17 years later. Yeah. Wait, no, no, seven years later. Wait, 1999 <laughs> to 2007, help me. That is eight years later. Oh, man. Was it really 2007 that Toy Story 3 came out? That can't be right. What do you think it was? Nine? Like nine or ten. Oh, okay. It hasn't been very long. It's only two. I mean, it's already 2012, so it couldn't have been well, maybe five Cars years was 2007. ago. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds more. I think Cars was 2006, but.